It was a conference at Asilomar that made headlines around the world. The brightest minds of artificial intelligence converged on Asilomar, and a reporter asked them a question. When will this fable singularity take place? When will the machines take over? When will machines become smarter than us? Well, the answer was quite interesting. Among the top people assembled in one place, the answers were anything from 20 years in the future to a thousand years in the future, with some AI experts saying never. Some people put it at 2029. They even give you an exact date. 2029, that's going to be the moment of truth that one day a robot will wake up, wake up in the laboratory, look around and say, I am aware. I'm just as smart as you. In fact, I could be even smarter if I put a few more chips in my brain. Other people say, not so fast, not so fast, because Moore's law is going to break down. The reason why many people are so confident about this prediction of the so-called singularity is because of Moore's law. That computer power doubles every 18 months, and it's a, it's a curve that has held sway for 50 years. If you go back 100 years, back to the time of mechanical hand crank computers, put that into Moore's law, and you still get a nice fit. So believe it or not, Moore's law has been in operation for about 100 years, going back to hand crank calculators with computer power doubling every 18 months. Well, can this go on forever? And the answer is no, because eventually physics takes over. And that is physics says that silicon is unstable at the molecular level. Transistors get so small, so powerful, and they generate so much heat that the silicon chip melts and electrons leak out because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. You don't know where the electron is anymore. Therefore, we physicists are looking for replacements for silicon. The post-silicon era will be about 10 to 15 years in the future. Silicon Valley could become a rust belt. Think about it. Every Christmas, your PCs, your computers, your gadgets will be just as powerful as they were the previous year. And then the question is, are you going to buy? Are you going to buy any more computer products for Christmas time, knowing that they're just as powerful as they were the previous year? Probably not. Which means that the computer industry could begin to begin to shake as a consequence. So we physicists are looking at optical computers, quantum computers, DNA computers, protein computers, all sorts of different kinds of architecture, down to the molecular, down to the atomic, down to the microscopic realm. But none of them are ready for prime time yet. So my answer is, I don't know. All I'm saying is there's vast uncertainties in projecting Moore's law into the future. However, I would say by end of the century, I would say by end of the century, it is definitely conceivable that if we work out the technical problems, we might be able to create machines that are as smart as us. Right now, our machines are as smart as insects. Eventually, they'll be smart as mice. After that, they'll be smart as dogs and cats. Probably by the end of the century, who knows, they'll be as smart as monkeys. At that point, they could be potentially dangerous because monkeys can formulate their own plans. They don't have to listen to you. They can formulate their own strategies, their own goals. And I would say, therefore, at that point, let's put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they get murderous thoughts. Isaac Asimov advocated something like that with his three laws. I say, hey, put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they start to get murderous. Recently, I was on the Richard Quest show on CNN TV, and I was asked the question that we have the battle of the billionaires. On one hand, we have Mark Zuckerberg saying, don't worry, artificial intelligence will give us new jobs, new industries, create wealth, prosperity. And then we have people like, well, Elon Musk, who says, watch out. They pose an existential threat to humanity. Who knows? Maybe one day they'll put us in zoos and throw peanuts at us and make us dance. Make us dance behind bars like we do with monkeys and with bears. 
Well, my personal point of view is that both points of view are, in some sense, correct. In the short term, I think Zuckerberg is right. Artificial intelligence will open up whole new vistas. It'll make life more convenient. Things will be cheaper. New industries will be created. I personally think the AI industry will be bigger than the automobile industry. In fact, I think the automobile is going to become a robot. You'll talk to your car. You'll argue with your car. Your car will give you the best facts, the best route between point A and point B. The car will be part of the robotics industry. Whole new industries involving the repair, maintenance, servicing of robots, not to mention robots that are software programs that you talk to and make life more convenient. However, let's not be naive. There is a point, a tipping point, at which they could become dangerous and pose an existential threat. And that tipping point is self-awareness. You see, robots are not aware of the fact that they're robots. They're so stupid, they simply carry out what they are instructed to do because they're adding machines. We forget that. Adding machines don't have a will. Adding machines simply do what you program to do. Now, of course, let's not be naive about this. Eventually, adding machines may be able to compute alternate goals and alternate scenarios when they realize that they are not human. Right now, robots do not know that. However, there is a tipping point at which point they could become dangerous. Now, right now, our most advanced robot has the intelligence of a cockroach, a rather stupid cockroach. However, it's only a matter of time before robots become as smart as a mouse, then as smart as a rat, then a rabbit, then a cat, dog, and eventually as smart as a monkey. Now, monkeys know they are not human. They have a certain amount of self-awareness. Dogs, especially young dogs, are not quite sure. One reason why dogs obey the master is because they think the master is the top dog. And so they're a little bit confused about whether or not uh, we humans are part of the dog tribe. But monkeys, I think, have no, no problems with that. They know they're not human. So when robots become as intelligent as monkeys, I think we should put a chip in their brain to shut them off if they begin to have murderous thoughts. When will that happen? I don't know. I suspect it'll happen late in this century because I think we have decades of experience that, have to be, uh, that have, we have to go through and learn before we can pose this particular problem. So in other words, I don't think there's any rush today to deal with killer robots that are going to destroy the human race and take over. But I think we have to keep one eye, one eye on the ball, and realize that by the end of this century, when robots do become self-aware, we have to be careful.